I know uh, from, from uh, Tampa, we went to Langley for uh, radar training. They had radar that they put in the ball turret for the bomber for, to help you bomb when you couldn't see the ground when there was 10 times cloud cover. Uh, from there, we, uh, we went overseas via the northern route, Newfoundland, Iceland. We landed in Ireland at uh, Nuts Corner. I don't know where the Irish got the name, but the name of the place was Nuts Corner. <laughs> uh, from there, we went to uh, Stoke on the Trent, and the gunners went to gunnery school. The officer, officers went to training. And uh, on uh, September the 8th of 1944, I was assigned to the 568th Bomb Group of the 390th of, of uh, Squadron. The next day, one of the B-17s in Squadron 570 took a direct hit in the bomb bay, and he took four B-7 took four B-17s down with him. So they moved. One day I was in the 566, 68. The next day they moved me and our crew to, to the 570th. I, I flew my first mission uh, the day before my 21st birthday, September 13th of 90, 1944. Uh, the new crews always brought up the tail end of bomber formations, and uh, I was a tail gunner. Our first mission was to Warsaw, Poland, a must mission by President Roosevelt because the Germans were sla slaughtering the Polish partisans. And so we went there uh, on the 16th of September, we got over Poland and the target was was uh, clouded in. So we recalled on the 16th, on the 18th we went back. Well, we were a new crew. We had 110 bombers on that, loaded with guns, ammunition, food, and supplies, and we flew tail end Charlie, the last airplane to go over the target, and I was a tail gunner. <laughs> My second mission. Luckily. A couple B-17s straggled behind, so they didn't touch us. But we usually bombed at uh, about 28, 25,000 feet. Because they wanted to get these parachute bombs on target, we went in at 13,000 feet, and they shot the living daylights out of us. Um, that mission, we were in the air for 11 hours. That's about maximum for a B-17. You got to have a good pilot that can get you and get you 11 hours out of it. The airplane carried 2,800 gallons of 100 octane gas, and uh, so we were in the air 11 hours. The next day we left Russia, and we flew to a shuttle mission to Italy. On the way, we bombed a railroad yard in Solno, Hungary, and we had an engine catch on fire. Uh, they let us get in to Foggia, Foggia, Italy. Uh, you fired a few red flares, and they let you in right away if you were, had problems. Um, from there, uh, we went back to the base. Uh, I'll just tell you something about uh, my other missions. We had a wonderful pilot. Uh, we all, he handled it just like a, like a Mercedes band or whatever you want to call him. He knew that airplane from one end to the other. And I'm here today because of him. I'm here today because of him. On October 9th of 1944, we went to Munster, Germany in the Ruhr Valley. And being a tail gunner, you always, at 10,000 feet, you put your mask on for air. When you did, when I put my, uh, uh, put, put my mask on, I also put my flak suit on. When I put my flak suit on, being a tail, tail gunner, I wore a flag suit that, that would cover my back. It would protect you from low velocity flak. If you had low velocity flak, the parachute would, would protect you, but it might have a few holes in it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we went there and uh, I, had, uh, I had used that, uh, that backpack for myself. Uh, all of a sudden, something happened and I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know where I was at. And all of a sudden I realized my foot was freezing. So I, re I reached down to 
get my foot and somebody hit me in the door and they said, blinkity blink, keep this gosh darn mask on. Well, it was a pilot. He came back in the tail and he had a walk around mask and he put that on my face. Here when I had put that flak suit on, I had disconnected my oxygen and there I was. I had passed out and never even knew it.